is the will of God that we should be in good health always and be healed of every infirmity. If you don't need healing, someone around you definitely might need it. This is your opportunity and for those sick around you to be connected to the teaching of God's word for healing. Don't forget, God's word is God's medicine. I prophesy as your amen will come like thunder, you will swim in the miraculous. Power City International presents Harvest of Healing, Miracles, Signs and Wonders, ministering Dr. Abel Daminer. Date 11th April to 18th April 2021. Time Monday to Saturday, 6 p.m. daily, and on Sunday, first service 8 a.m. and second service 11 a.m. GMT plus one, and a rebroadcast on the following radio stations. Radio Aquaibom 90.5 FM Uyo 11 AM to 1 PM XL FM 106.9 Uyo 3 PM Unio FM 100.7 Uyo 3 PM to 5 PM Comfort FM 95.1 Uyo 6 PM to 8 PM Inspiration FM 105.9 Uyo 9 PM to 10 PM Heritage Radio 104.9 Uyo, 10 p.m. till midnight daily and also on Kingdom Life Network Station. Also live on Facebook at Abel Daminer Public Figure, YouTube Abel Daminer Ministries International, Twitter Abel Daminer and Instagram at Abel Daminer Watch Real Time. Venue Power City International, number 98 Wangibo Road, Uyo, Akwaibom State, Nigeria. Host Doctors Abel and Rachel Daminer. Jesus is my salvation. Jesus 
is my righteousness. Jesus is my righteousness. Jesus is my truth. Yeah. Jesus is my truth. Jesus is my peace. To peace, I oh, peace. Jesus yeah. is my peace. I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe the word of God. Receive revelation. Receive revelation. Receive understanding. I receive I fully trust the word. I fully trust. I believe. I believe. I believe the word. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we come humbly and respectfully before your holy written word. And we thank you for the privilege to study, to learn, to be equipped. The privilege to be imparted by the grace that comes from the knowledge of your word. And I ask that tonight as we fellowship in the light, as we receive instructions from your word, bodies and yokes are destroyed. Whatever is not planted by God is rooted out. 
We decree that your people are built up tonight and we declare that by the end of this service every sick body is healed and every body is destroyed and your people are liberated to enjoy the liberty that is in Christ Jesus. So we rejoice tonight by faith that nobody lives here the same way they came. We give you praise, glory and honor for answer prayer. In Jesus precious name and every believer says a powerful amen. Praise God. Let's lift our right hands to heaven as we release our faith together tonight. As we say these words, I am born of God. I am born of the world. The word of God is my nature. I do not struggle to do the word. I do the word naturally. Therefore today, I will understand the word of his grace. I will be built up. By the end of this service, I will never be the same. Never ever be the same again. In Jesus' name, and every believer says a powerful amen. We want to welcome everybody connected to this service by way of Kingdom Life Network, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, all of the social media community. We welcome every one of you to the service tonight. And we also want to welcome all of the Aquai Bomb State community connected to this service by way of Comfort FM, XL FM, Radio Aquai Bomb, You Know Your FM, Inspiration FM, Heritage FM. We're so glad to welcome all of you to the brought to the service tonight. We'd like you to do me a favor right now. Call a friend, a family member. If you have people that are sick in the hospitals, get them to tune to this station right now or get them to tune to this platform right now. The healing power of God is available and flowing through tonight. And we are standing in faith tonight to see all the sick people connected to this service totally healed by the power of God. Our social media community, like you've always done, look, let's do it again tonight. Help me share the video. You know, invite friends, tag some people, put them on monogram, telegram, and WhatsApp groups. Let's get the whole world flooded with the truth that is in Christ Jesus. And of course, if you know people that are sick, you may need to call them on phone to tune in or get the, your, your device to where they are. Let them listen to the word of God. God's word comes with confirmation, healing signs and wonders. All our house churches, we want to welcome every one of you to the service. We're so glad to have all of you connected and all the campuses all over the world. What a blessing to have everyone in the service tonight. Grab your pen, your Bible, your notebook. You can be seated with your sweet, smart self as we get into the word tonight. Mm -mm -mm. Glory to God. All right. Mm -mm. We're examining the harvest of healing, miracles, signs, and wonders. The harvest of healings, miracles, signs, and wonders. We've been in this on this series since Sunday. And we're having amazing testimonies, testimonies of miracles, healings, I mean diverse kinds. And I trust God that somewhere towards the end of the week we will be able to create a little window to take some testimonies of what God is doing all over the world in this week of a harvest of healing, miracles, signs, and wonders. The book of Proverbs chapter 4 verse number 20. Proverbs chapter 4 verse number 20. My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. So that gives us a sense of commitment to listening to the world. There are some subjects you cannot afford to use reserved knowledge. You've got to constantly listen to them afresh as if you have never listened to them before. And one of those subjects is healing. Another one of those subjects is walking in the spirit or being led by the spirit. You can't afford to use reserved knowledge. You can't afford to say, well, I have had that teaching before. <laughs> no, when it comes to the healing of your body and maintaining your, yourself in divine health, you need to hear the word of God all the time in that area. In fact, every day or many times a day, you need to hear the word of God in that area because your body is frail and your body is mortal. Therefore, it is exposed to all kinds of bombardment in the atmosphere. You have to keep listening to the word in that area. <clears throat> because you will always need healing for yourself. And if you don't need it, somebody around you may need it and you will have to minister to him. One of those subjects you can teach, you know, and someone else receives healing is the subject of healing. That the man teaching may be in need of healing, but he is not able to receive and yet somebody listening to him could receive healing so that is why it's important to pay attention and constantly be in the practice 
of receiving what is yours from the Lord. As a believer, you must meditate on the subject of healing every day. It must be a daily thing all the time. You listen to the word of God. You meditate on the subject of healing. You speak God's healing word over your body. My body is strong. My body is healthy. My body is sound. Every day you keep speaking God's healing word over your body. It's so important because we are exposed to all sorts of anti-health issues in the environment, in the foods we eat, in the lifestyle that the society has created for us in these times. So therefore, it's, it's very important that you pay attention, you attend to God's word. You know, it's like food. You have to eat food all the time. You can't say because I ate food yesterday, I will not eat food today. You've got to eat food all the time. So, in spiritual terms, eating is hearing the word, believing it in your heart, and speaking it out. That is what eating is in spiritual times. And you know, your mind, which is where your heart functions, will meditate, will meditate on the word. We all meditate. There's no human being that does not meditate. Only that we don't meditate on the same things. Because every human being is thinking about something at one time or the other. And that thinking is what we call meditation. Sometimes you're thinking about dying or you're thinking about failure or you're thinking about pain. That's on the negative. And then there are people also who think all the time about how to make money, how to get money, how to get ahead in life. All of that is meditation. Therefore, the believer must be selective on what he chooses to meditate on. It's very important. You must be selective. Because meditation is anything that occupies your mind. Anything that occupies your mind. And one of the attributes of medication is that when you meditate, it forms images. It creates pictures. You're able to have pictures and images in your mind. As you think about things, you suddenly begin to see the pictures of such things. In the Hebrew, when you use the word meditation, is the Hebrew word arga, and it implies to shout, to shout, to shout. Okay? And you know, when you shout... You cannot hear anything else. <laughs> when you shout, you cannot hear anything else. Let's, let's illustrate it, everybody. Can we all shout right now? Okay, let's do a better shout. Let's do a better shout. I know you're ready now. Okay, let's shout right now. Now, when you're shouting, you don't hear anything else. What meditation does is it shuts out everything else other than what you're thinking about. So, meditation means to shout. It's not a passive thinking. It's an active one. It's a loud one where you can't hear anything again. That's the meaning of the word meditate in the Hebrew. In the Greek is the word melito, which has to do with something you care about. Something you care about. Something you give your attention to. You know, so whatever you meditate upon, that is the same thing you give your attention to. And one of the ways you know is you say it so often. You keep repeating the facts. You keep repeating the facts. When you're meditating on something, that's what you keep talking about all the time. You keep repeating it. You keep speaking it loud. Even when you're quiet, you're thinking about it because you are meditating on it. So he says, my son, attend to my words. Incline your ears. Incline your ears unto my sayings. Let's look at a few things. You know, some of us, we are cautious of how and what we speak. Then after a while, you relax and you started talking about anything. You just started talking. Oh, I'm so tired. I'm sick. Oh, I feel like I'm going to die. Now you're careless. You're talking about everything. You're sounding like everybody else is sounding because you don't want to sound different. Now you need to be meticulous in your everyday living on how you use words generally. How you use generally. Mark 11, 23. <clears throat> Mark 11, 23. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. 
The background was that Jesus spoke to a fig tree, which figuratively had to do with what he said about the temple. But just like, like every sign of Jesus, the miracles of Jesus will always point to a greater event. But the miracles always had a principle of faith or a principle of, of Christian living. So in Mark 11, he saw a fig tree, he spoke to the tree. No man eat fruit of thee hereafter and forever. And his disciples heard him. One thing was that he spoke. Jesus spoke. If there was something about Jesus outstanding in the four gospels was how he spoke. How he spoke. In fact, at some time they said he spoke as one that had authority. And not as the scribes. Alright. So Jesus' words were authoritative. Whether he was teaching or praying for the sick or rebuking the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Whatever he was doing, his words were authoritative. The same way he spoke to the fig tree. It was not anything different from how he has been, you know, has he has been teaching. He said, no man eat fruit of thee hereafter and forever. And the disciples heard Jesus. Then, when they were coming back the next day, the Bible says on the morrow, Peter calling to remember and said, Master, the tree which you cursed is withered, oh, is withered from the roots. It's withered or dried up from, from the roots. Then Jesus now says in Mark eleven twenty two, put it up for me, have faith in God or have God's faith or have the faith that God gives. Have God's faith or have the faith that God gives. Have faith in God. Next verse 23. Whosoever, I mean verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, unto this specific mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. So he puts the emphasis on how Jesus spoke. Not just the fact that he spoke, but how he spoke. Whosoever shall say to this mountain. So, he is not just talking about speaking. He tells you how. If Jesus was talking about himself, he would not use whosoever. So, whosoever shall say implies anybody can put himself there to this mountain... Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. Just like salvation. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever, whosoever shall say, whosoever believeth in him shall not perish. So when he says whosoever in the faith of God shall say and not doubt. Whosoever in the faith of God shall say and not doubt, but shall believe those things he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he says. The construction there is such that the last one carries something you keep saying in, you know, without end. You just keep saying it. You keep saying, you keep saying, you keep saying, you keep saying, you know, without end. If there was no need to persist, the word shall not doubt wouldn't be included. It's a persisting saying. It's not a casual saying. It's a saying wherein you persist. Which means that it's very possible that I will say and nothing is happening. So that is why I persist in saying. I may say and nothing is happening. It doesn't mean it will not happen. But I've got to persist in what I'm saying until what I'm saying takes effect. Alright? That's why he says, and shall not doubt in his heart. 
but shall believe that those things he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. This where sometimes we have symptoms. You've been prayed for, hands have been laid on you, and you still feel the symptoms and pain. Oh yes, you came for healing. We taught you the word of God. We laid hands on you. We prayed over you. You believed you received. You acted in faith. But you still have the symptoms and the pain. So you persist and keep saying, the power of God is at work in my body. You keep saying that. You keep saying that. The power of God is at work in my body. He says, and shall not doubt in his heart. But shall believe that what he says shall come to pass. He shall have. As long as he keeps saying it and does not allow room for doubt. If he stays with it, it will surely come. And shall not doubt in his heart. Few years ago, I mean quite a few years ago. When I was still growing in my Christian journey with God. I came across a book that built up my faith. Where healing was concerned. And then the guy told the story of a young man in, in New York who went to a lab for a test and they said they saw a tumor, I think a tumor in his heart or so and they said he needed an emergency operation. And he said to them, well, I think something is wrong with your x-ray machine. <laughs> when you fix your x-ray machine, I'll be back to do the test again. So he left and went to another lab. And the lab did the test and saw the same thing. And he said to them, the problem is with your machines. I've been warning all of you to fix your machines. I am healed by his stripes. I cannot have a growth in my heart. Anyway, when you fix your machines, I'll be back. He went to the third place. No jokes. Went up to the seventh. And the seventh lab, they told him, there is no iota of anything. Your heart is hale and hearty. He said, you got the right machines. You've got the right machines. Then he went back to the first lab and they did the test and saw nothing. They said, what happened? He said, I told you to fix your machines. Now that you have fixed your machines, can't you see the result is different? He went to the second one. Now, I believe that there was a growth in his heart, but he spoke and kept speaking and kept speaking and kept speaking. He received and stayed in faith until he heard what he said. You persist. You say it because it must work or it must work or it must work or it must work. Why? Because the word has worked. The word of God is not going to work. The word of God has already worked. All you've got to do is stay in faith. Shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe what he says. He shall have what he says. You know, some of us have ways of talking like the world or before the world. You know, that's why sometimes the testimony is tough may work against some people. It's like putting up an appearance for people to believe us. We just say it so that people can be happy. But when we are alone, we keep quiet. We are saying nothing. Here he says, shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things he said shall come to pass. You know, Brother Mark had two key words, fear and faith. Fear and faith in the book of Mark. Fear and faith. Notice that at the end of the four gospels, only the Mark gospel carries something. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Then he says, he that believes not shall be damned. Salvation, damnation. Faith, fear in the book of Mark. Believe what? Believe what you say. They that believe what you say and are baptized shall be saved. Why? Because you are preaching the gospel. Which means... That words are very vital and words are very key. My mouth is not just for eating. Can I hear you say that? Say with me again. My mouth is not just for gisting. 
So God didn't give you a mouth just to eat and to gist. If you observe, the scriptures give you a guideline on what to do with your mouth. There's a guideline on what to do with your mouth. Number one, don't sin with your mouth. Regulate it. Why? Because my mouth is to preach the gospel. Mark 16, 15. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. My mouth is to preach the gospel. Number two, my mouth is to give thanks to God always. I use my mouth to give thanks to God always. Number three, I use my mouth to pray. I use my mouth to pray. Number four, I use my mouth to edify the brethren. I use my mouth to speak in tongues and interpret or I use my mouth to prophesy. So therefore, I must see my mouth as a tool for spiritual realities. I must see my mouth as a tool for spiritual realities. Why? Because I preach the gospel with my mouth. I praise God with my mouth. I pray with my mouth. I'm filled with the spirit with my mouth. Ephesians 5, 18. Be filled with the spirit speaking, verse 19, speaking to yourselves. Be being filled with the spirit speaking, speaking. So I am filled with the spirit using my mouth. That is what I'm supposed to chiefly use my mouth for. So the Mark 11 principle is applicable even in the preaching of the gospel. Because you use your mouth to preach the gospel. You don't preach the gospel by meditation. You don't preach the gospel by nodding your head. You open your mouth to preach the gospel. So the gospel cannot be preached if the mouth is not engaged. I will say in my preaching. Look at Acts chapter 2. You know, after Luke had told us what Peter preached, he now told us in verse 40, Acts chapter 2, verse number 40. Mm -mm. Acts 2, verse 40. And with many other words, other words, did he testify and exhort, saying, save yourselves from this utter word generation. With many other words. The words of Peter. In verse 41 of Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2 verse 41. Then they that gladly received his word. That gladly received his word. Were baptized. And the same day they were added unto them. About 3,000 souls. So what will you say? If you say God saved 3,000 souls, you are right. If you say God saved 3,000 souls when Peter spoke, you are right. Or God saved 3,000 souls as Peter admired them. As Peter looked at them. As Peter was clapping for them. No. As Peter spoke. So which means that when I am talking God is walking. When I am talking, God is walking. Every time I talk the talk, God walks the walk. When I'm talking, God is walking. But you know the words look like I am just talking. That's how it looks like. I'm healed. I'm healed. No, God is walking when you're talking. But as I am talking, God is at work. Which means my words are God's tools in the earth. My words are God's tools in the earth. My mouth is God's tool in the earth. My mouth is God's tool in the earth. Glory to God. <clears throat> Say with me, everybody, my mouth is the access of God's power into the earth. My mouth is the access 
of God's power into the earth. So if I don't open my mouth, I am denying the power of God access into the earth. My mouth is God's instrument of accessing the earth with God's power. Say with me again, the power of God comes into the earth through my mouth. Say it again, the power of God comes into the earth through my mouth. That is my speaking. See? So, my speaking puts the power of God into action. See that? We say the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. How is the gospel, which is the power of God unto salvation, made available? Through my mouth. The gospel, which is the power of God unto salvation, is only giving access to humanity when I open my mouth. So my mouth is God's tool of transmitting his power into the earth. You must never forget that. Kabayada. So this, my mouth, brings the power of God into the earth realm. My mouth utters things. It brings, it regulates, it directs, it channels the power of God into the earth realm. My mouth. How do you know you're born again? Somebody preached the gospel to you. You heard it, you believe it, you spoke. You are saved. How are you saved? Someone preached the gospel to you. Which means that the person's words gave access to God's power to save in the earth. When I preach, I am giving God's power access to save men on the earth. Every time you are preaching, you are regulating, you are channeling God's power for the salvation of men. That's why without a preacher, men cannot be saved. How can they hear without a preacher? And how can the preacher preach? Except he be sent. The preacher can only preach when he is sent. Are you still here? You know, you can decide to train your mouth this year. You can put your mouth in a training class. Since you know that your mouth gives access to God's power, train it to speak what God will work with. Train your mouth to speak what God will work with. Don't allow your mouth give Satan access. Train your mouth to speak words that God can use. We saw from scriptures how that your words can corrupt another person. In James chapter 3 verse 1, look at James chapter 3 verse 1. Brother James says, My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. Next verse 2. For in many things we offend all. If any, of any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man and able also to bridle the whole body. Next verse. Behold, we put bits in the horses' mouths that they may obey us. And we turn about their whole body. Next verse. Behold also the sheep, which though they be so great and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small helm, whithersoever the governor listed. Next verse. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasted great things. Behold, how great a matter, a little fire kindle it. Next verse. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body, and set it on fire the cause of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. That is, your tongue determines the destination of your life. Your tongue determines the outcome of your life. Putting your body under will be a function of your words. Your words will put your body under. 
If you want to break a habit or you want to break addiction, it begins with what you say. If a man is addicted to something and he wants to be free from it, he has to start saying the right words because your mouth will channel the power of God that will ultimately free you from that addiction or habit. You've got to mind what you say. In a humorous way, you've got to mind your language. You mind your language. You mind your language. Say with me very loud. I acknowledge what God says I am. I affirm who God says I am. And I can do what God says I can do. I thought somebody would shout hallelujah. So you first of all affirm the reality of what you will practice. In whatever you say. The world is so loose. This world is a loose world. Therefore, you must decide to speak the word only. There is nothing wrong if you decide to speak the word of God all the time. Nobody will beat you. People say, how are you doing? Oh, the word of God is working in my circumstances. So, ah, it looks like you're not doing well in business. No, the word of God is working and my needs are met according to his riches in glory. Glory to God. You speak the word of God all the time. How are you doing? Fine. What is fine? What is fine? How are you doing? The word of God is working mightily in my circumstances. I am blessed and I am ahead of all the situations around. So that way, you are channeling God's power to get involved. No careless moments. No careless moments. At all the time, you are guarded. You are speaking how forcible are right words. Stop trying to impress people at the detriment of your life. Speak what God says. And speak what you know God will work with. Don't just speak because you want to speak. Speak because you believe what you are saying and because you know that those words will give access to the power of God. He says, by the many words. Whose words? Peter's words. See what Peter said in Acts chapter 5 verse 20. Acts chapter 5 verse 20. <clears throat> Go stand and speak in the temple to the people. All the words of this life. All the words of this life. He says, send for a man called Peter. That he may speak words whereby you shall be saved. Words. And while Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on those who had. So Peter's words channeled the power of God. Peter's words directed the power of God. Put value on your words as a child of God. I mean, imagine the pictures of an agent, of an angel that Peter saw did not bring salvation. An encounter with the angel did not bring salvation. The salvation came to the house of Cornelius by what Peter said. Even the presence of an angel couldn't deliver it. It took Peter to speak after the encounter for men to be saved. That's how important words are. If salvation came via speaking, then I can see that many things God will do on the earth can only be done by speaking. As serious as salvation is, it came by speaking. Every other thing God will do on the earth will function by speaking. After all, when we pray, we are speaking. When we pray, speaking. When we prophesy, we are speaking. So what else is not done through speaking? In Romans chapter 10 verse 8, Say not in your heart, who shall go to the grave to bring Christ down? out? Say not in your heart, who shall go up to heaven to bring Christ down? What saith it? 
the word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart, that is the word of faith which we preach. Next verse, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Say not in your heart, but what saith it? He said it so often that when he got to verse 9 and 10, he says, with your heart, you believe with your mouth, you confess. So salvation, salvation or speaking, being filled with the Spirit, speaking, salvation, speaking, prophesying, speaking, there's a whole lot of what God does on the earth through speaking. When your mouth is quiet, you hinder the power of God. You hinder the acts of God in your life. And you hinder the acts of God on the earth. My mouth is not just for eating Amala. Abu and Afang. Beyond that, my mouth gives the power of God access to the earth. If you don't speak it, don't expect it. If you don't say it, don't expect it. Because ultimately you shall have only what you say. The power of God is at work in my body. Kayadaba. The power of God is at work in my circumstances. The power of God is at work in my family. Praise God. <clears throat> I say praise God. Thank you Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So my mouth is an access for the power of God in the earth today. Words whereby you might be saved. How did Jesus know his disciples were afraid? By what they said. Master, carest thou not that we perish? Those are fear-filled words. And Jesus stood up and said, Peace, be still. He called the things that be not as though they were. What was available? Perish. Threat. Threat to life. What did Jesus say? He didn't say threat. He didn't say confusion. He said peace, which is the opposite of the circumstance. He called the things that be not as though they were. You feel pain? You shout help. You feel weakness? You shout strength. You call the things that be not. Don't call the things that are as though they are not. That's not what you are told. You are told to call the things that be not. Speak the expected end. Speak the expected end. And speak it all the time. I am what the word says I am. In other words, the same way fear is accessed into the earth by words. Fear will die unborn. When it is not uttered. Fear will die unborn. When it is not uttered. Till you give it the same legitimate right. In your word. It will die unborn. So Jesus knew. That they were afraid. By what they said. By what they said. My mouth therefore. It's God's access. Into the earth. My mouth brings salvation. My mouth brings direction. My mouth brings healing. Instead of saying, I don't know what to do. I am a bit confused. Open your mouth and say, I know what to do. My steps are ordered by the Lord. My mind understands God's purpose in this situation. My mind factors out God's design, God's plan. I am not confused. I have clarity. I know exactly what to do and I do what I need to do. Glory to God. I am not confused. I have direction. My steps are ordered by the Lord and I do what is right. You say it and say it until you know what to do. You say it and say it until you know what to do. I have direction. I have clarity. I have precision. I have accuracy. I'm not doing trial and error. My mind is educated by my spirit to do what is right. You speak the words that God will work with. 
What about saying, I know I am led by the spirit of God. I know I am walking in the light. I know what to do. When to do it. There's no occasion of stumbling here. My steps are ordered by the Lord. What about saying that? I walk in the light. I walk in the light. Oh, I walk in the light. The word of God is a lamp to my feet. There's no occasion of stumbling. I do not beat about the bush. I have clarity. I know exactly where to step into, when to step in there, and when not to step in there. I, I intentionally take my steps. I do not accidentally stumble. No, intentionally, my steps are calculated. And they are calculated with precision. When I move, I move with accuracy. Because my steps are ordered. You speak words that God will walk with. Am I teaching good? Don't just speak because it, 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 sounds, it sounds popular. What God cannot do does not exist. God cannot lie. A lie exists. God cannot steal. And stealing exists. God cannot die and death exists. Don't just, don't copy cliches. Follow doctrine. Don't follow cliches by motivational speakers. Follow sound teaching so you can have a sound life. My steps are ordered. My going out is blessed. My coming in is blessed. My life is intentional. I do not live accidentally. No, my life is calculated with precision. So the outcome of my life is exact. I know exactly what I will be like in the next five years. My life is not an accident. My life is predestined and predesigned by God. And I live a life that is purposeful, a life that is accurate within the confines of God's plan, God's purpose. And God's assignment for my life. I am not an accident going somewhere to happen. I am a well predestined, well ordained life going somewhere to fulfill God's ultimate plan. You speak words that the Holy Ghost will walk with. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, let's just try. No, we don't just try. We don't just try. If you don't know, stop and keep saying I know what to do. Until you know what to do. <laughs> praise God. I say praise God. You are not responding with a doubt in your mind. You are speaking the integrity of God's word. Because you walk in the light as is in the light. You do not walk in darkness. You have put the word of God ahead of your experiences. Say with me very loud, no fear here. No anxiety here. No panic here. I didn't hear a good amen. When things get out of control, hold yourself together and say, God supplies my need. God supplies my need. My rent is paid for supernaturally. God supplies my needs. God supplies my needs. God supplies my needs. My car is serviced supernaturally. God supplies my needs. You speak words that the Holy Ghost will work with. Teaching good? What you're doing is you're giving access to God's power on the earth. You're giving direction. Yeah. Imagine Jesus saying every idle word a man speaks, he will give account. That's heavy. One of the examples we have about Jesus in scripture is, there is no guile found in his mouth. No guile found in Jesus' mouth. In fact, 1 Peter 2.21 says, when he was reviled, he reviled not. When he was reviled, he reviled not. So, my words are vital. There is no way I will glorify God when I glorify sickness and disease. You sit down and give us the history of the disease. You give us the history. We don't need it. 
Whether you give us the history or not, the important thing is you need healing. So don't bore us. Don't overwhelm us with your evidence. There's a way somebody would tell you about their problem. Even you that is about to pray, you will not find the prayer. You will not find the prayer. And there are people that are very good at that. And the reason is because they are looking for sympathy. They are not looking for healing. So such people end up with sympathy. Sorry, you. Sorry, you. Sorry, you. Sorry. Sorry. God will do it. Sorry. She, you use one hour to tell me about the sickness. The one hour I will have used to tell you about your healing. You use it to narrate the story. All right, no problem. We agree that is what it is. Sorry. Whatever the sickness is, if you allow us to give you the word of God, even you may not have the details of the sickness, but the word of God will factor it out. When Jesus spoke, it went to the root of the tree. The word of God is not blind. It will trace it wherever it is hiding. And it will, it will bring it out. It will clear it. We don't care about the analysis. We are not interested in the x-ray report. We are not interested in the medical name. Kukuku, kukukus. We are not interested. The important thing is that your body is not well. You want to be well, right? Be healed in the name of Jesus. And God's healing power will go right to the root of that sickness. And take it out. Somebody say, I hear you. Sometimes the diagnosis the doctor gave you may not be accurate. But the power of God never misses it. No, no, the power of God is always accurate. Even if the medical analysis, the prognosis of the doctor is inaccurate, when God's power is channeled by the words we speak, they will go to the root of that problem and trace it to wherever it's hiding and take care of it. I believe in miracles. I say 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 God's power is working in my body. Oh, Jacola da Baba. Somebody shout, God's power is working in my body. No matter how you describe the sickness, it does not glorify God. No matter how you describe it, it does not glorify God. God only gets glory when he heals it. God heals. He heals the sick. He raises the dead. He cleanses the lepers. I say those words. Because my words are meant to glorify God. My words matter. It gives access to God in the earth realm. I therefore yield my words to the power of God. Say with me, I yield my words to the power of God. I yield my words to the power of God. Not to my experiences. Not to doubt. Not to anxiety. Not to worry. But to the power of God. The healing power of God is available to me right now. I yield my words to God's healing power. I yield my words to the healing power. I don't use my words to announce symptoms. I use my words to announce God's healing. I do not use my words to announce and describe how I feel. I yield my words to God's power. My words will not cooperate with the symptoms. My words cooperate with the healing power of God. The power of God is at work in my body right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. My natural human mind wants me to discuss symptoms. But symptoms don't glorify God. So I suspend my mind and I speak by my spirit. Power of God is at work in my body. Pain does not stay. Disease does not hide in my body. I have been bought with a price. Therefore, I glorify God by healing in my body. I receive healing. I receive miracles. I receive healing. Curative healing. Curative healing. Restorative healing. I receive miracles for my body right now every organ of my body functions well i thought i'll hear powerful amen the power of god is at work in my body right now 
Hallelujah. You know, when you tell people about your problem, your sickness and your disease, you have a temporary relief because you discuss. But after the discussion, it increases. When you pour out your heart, I'm looking for somebody to pour out my heart. I want to pour out my heart. You know, when you pour out your heart, you have a temporary relief. But you can decide to put the word of God in your lips and say what God says until your body conforms with God's realities. Praise God. In Mark chapter 5 and Romans chapter 4, <clears throat> somebody getting blessed tonight. In Mark chapter 5 and Romans chapter 4, we're going we're gonna to look at it quickly. <clears throat> the symptoms could be very real. They wake you up at night. They remind you early in the morning. You touch your body, you feel the symptoms of what has happened or what is happening. But you can put God's word on your lips and use the word of God in your mouth to chase out the symptoms. Give access to God's power. In Mark chapter 5, let's examine something critical. The woman heard of Jesus. Question, what are you hearing? What do you spend your whole day listening to? Huh. What do you spend your whole night listening to? The woman heard of Jesus. She heard of the power of God. She said, if I can but touch the hem of his garment, I know I shall be whole. Knowing that God will do it, does nothing. Knowing that God has done it for somebody does nothing for you. Knowing how to share it and teach others will do nothing for you. But she said, the Greek word is continuous. She kept saying, if I can but touch. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to narrate somebody's experience. If I can but touch the hem of his garment, I shall be whole. She kept saying it. Observe. She has been treated by many doctors for 12 years. Which means the symptoms were there. Imagine symptoms for 12 years. And the Bible says she got worse. You know, there's a way you get used to pain. Pain becomes natural. You know, there's a way you have so much pain that it affects, affects the way you walk. So because of the pain, you look for a comfort zone. And the comfort zone for that pain is to walk like this. And because you're, you, are, you have adjusted to the pain, the pain has become your normal, your new normal. But it, it, it does not remove the pain. The pain is still there. It's just that you have adjusted to accommodate the pain. And accept the pain as part of your life. No. It doesn't have to be a part of your life. That woman could have continued bleeding. But after 12 years she said no. How long will I continue like this? How long? No. No. There must be a way out. Then she heard of Jesus. Oh that is what I was waiting for. If I can touch. The hem of his garment. I know I shall be whole. No disease is normal. No disease is normal. No sickness is normal. How important are our words? She said. Observe. The Jairus, in Jairus' case, they told Jairus, don't trouble the master any longer. You know, sometimes even a preacher can transmit fear. Some preachers will tell you, well, you know, this is your problem. We just have to believe God. <laughs> Kenneth Hagin said when he was bedridden, he was bedridden on the bed. His grandma told him that a priest was coming to pray for him. The priest entered, encouraged him, and told him, don't worry, everything will be okay. My son, everything will be okay. Then he entered the next room. I was asking the grandma, what kind of burial does you want? And the, the priest didn't know that Kenegi was hearing them. They were arranging for his burial. 
they were arranging for his burial. But he kept meditating the scriptures. Mark eleven twenty three, Whosoever shall say to this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast to the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things he says shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever things he says. What things soever you desire. When you pray, believe you receive, and you shall have. By his stripes I was healed. Then one morning he said, as he was lying down and rehearsing those scriptures in meditation, the Lord said to him, will you be healed or you are healed? He said, I am healed. He said, what do people who get healed do? He said, they move. So if you're healed, what are you still doing on the bed? This is somebody that has not moved for I think 16 months. Lying down on the bed paralyzed for 16 months. One year, four months. But before he acted in his faith, he told grandma, grandma, go to the market. Buy me shoes. I'll be with you tomorrow morning in the breakfast table. The grandma said, why don't you get well first before we buy the shoes? He said, grandma, you go right now, buy me shoes. I'll be with you tomorrow morning at the breakfast table. That is nothing stops faith. Grandma went to the market to buy shoes. As soon as she left, Hagin said he moved his body from the bed to the edge and turned. And for the first time, dropped his two legs. Needles began to run through the legs. He felt like he was going to faint. He waited for a while and moved his bum bum off the bed. Came down, put the first step down, stood up and staggered like he would fall. He said, by his stripes, I am healed. I am healed. If I am healed, I cannot be lying down. By his stripes, I am healed. He took the second step. He staggered, staggered. After a while, he stabilized. He took the third step. He took the fourth step. He took the fifth step. He got to the door and walking back towards the bed. Walking back towards the bed. Grandma came back with shoe. Grandma opened the door and saw Hagin standing. He said, Grandma, I told you. I told you tomorrow morning I'll be with you in the breakfast table. Where are my shoes? <laughs> Where are my shoes? Oh, glory to God. Where are my shoes? And from that day, he has been alive until he was satisfied and decided to sleep at 80 something. This bedroom was at the age of 16 or so. He lived from 16 to 80 something. He refused the doctor's report. Your words will channel the power or your words will stifle the power. It's in the power of your mouth. This woman kept saying. This woman kept saying. You know, sometimes you can give somebody a medical report without transmitting fear. You can describe a situation without, you know, concluding in fear. Yeah, it's true that there is pain in your body, but Jesus took it. <laughs> Jesus took it. The power of God is working in your body. You don't deny the fact. Faith does not deny the fact. Faith doesn't say there is no mountain. Faith doesn't say there is no sickness. After all, Jesus said to the blind man, what do you want? He says, sight. Jesus said, receive your sight. Jesus didn't say, no, you are not blind. <laughs> He didn't say, no, you are not blind. Uh -uh. He says, okay, I agree. Receive yourself. He said, whosoever shall say to this mountain. So he recognizes that there is a mountain. But the mountain will be removed. We don't deny. We are not saying deny that there is pain in your body. What we are saying is that there may be pain in your body, but the power of God is heavier than the pain. The power of God is more real than the pain in that body. Praise God. Jesus spoke God's word. Jesus knew the import of what the people said to Jairus. Trouble no more the master. She is dead. Jesus immediately turned. Fear not. Only believe. Fear not. Only believe. Listen. 
there are some things that should die when they get to you. When a rumor gets to you, it should die with you. It should die there. When a negative report gets to where you are, it should die right there. When gossip gets to your direction, that should be the end of that gossip. Nothing should get to you and be transmitted. No, except it's the power of God. There are things people say negatively when they come close to where you are, they should die. Evil speaking should die when it arrives at your destination. Dishonor should die when it comes close to where you are. Malice, doubt, unbelief. It should stop as soon as it gets to you. Learn to shut out doubt. When they came to Jairus' house, the people were there lamenting the death of the child. Jesus entered and said, she's not dead. She shall live. They started laughing. He ordered them out. Out! Send them out. Lock the door. There are people, there are things you need to lock out so your faith can be active. There are things you cannot afford to accommodate because they will dampen the space of faith. They will dampen the atmosphere of faith. With your words, refuse to cooperate with the symptoms. Cooperate with God's power. Don't use your words for fear. Use your words for faith. She said, if I can touch the hem of his garments, I know I will be healed. Her saying that is meditation. Saying that is meditation. She told the story. Jesus didn't know what happened. She's the one who narrated the story. Your faith has made you whole. In other words, what she said made her whole. Her faith was the things she said. Your faith has made you whole. How often should I speak God's word? All the time. All the time. In the bed. In the morning. Wherever you are. At any time. Train yourself to always say God's word. Number two. The power of God. So, faith gives direction to the power of God. What she said. Your words give direction to the power of God. In Romans chapter 4 verse 19, Abraham something similar. Romans 4 19. <clears throat> and be not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. Considered not his body. How long has the body been dead? Long. He considered it not. That means as God spoke and he believed he could still see the evidence that Sarah was dead. When he was believing the word of God, the evidence of the deadness of Sarah's womb was still obvious. Look at me, everybody. When God spoke to Abraham, the evidence in his own body and in her body was obvious. But he considered not. You must come to where you don't consider the feeling, you don't consider the physical evidence. You consider only Jesus. Holy brethren. Partakers of the heavenly calling. Consider Jesus. And you know that is where the faith walk is. He considered not. The symptoms. Hundred years old. That was long enough to quit. Just like the woman. Twelve years. Look at that Romans chapter 4 verse 20 to 22. As I begin to round up, Romans chapter 4, verse 20 to 22. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. 21. And being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. Next verse. And therefore, it was imputed to him for righteousness. He called the things that be not. That means, the way Abraham did not consider his body was by what he was saying. How do I not consider how I feel when I begin to say what God says? You can't be saying what God says and be considering your body at the same time. 
You know, there is something that is very similar to faith. It is called mental ascent. Mental ascent will describe it. Mental ascent will talk about it. Mental ascent will even tell you, I have seen it before. It's in the Bible. Mental ascent will describe it. It will tell you the Hebrew and the Greek word. But when it comes to acting on the word, mental ascent will not act. It will describe everything. But it never acts. Because it never believed. It never acts. Because it never believed. A few years ago I had Creflo, Dr. Creflo Dollar. He gave, he gave a, an illustration that blessed me. He said somebody is starving and is about to die. And the medical doctor comes in to examine his body and he says, This guy is suffering from starvation. If you don't get food to him in another 30 minutes, he'll be dead. So they bring in a trolley full of food, assorted foods. And they keep it before him and they say, gentlemen, that's for you. And then he stands up and he begins to say, I believe that if I eat this food, I will not die. I believe that if I eat this food, glory to God, I will not die. I believe that if I eat this food, I will not die. He creates a song. 15 minutes gone. I believe 20 minutes gone. If I eat this food, 25 minutes gone. I believe. Did he believe that if he eats the food, he will not die? Yes. But did he eat the food? No. So faith is eating the food. Faith is acting on what you believe. Faith is acting on what you believe. If you truly believe that you are healed, you stand up and do what healed people do. Don't sit down and say, I believe I'm healed. I be no, no, no. They don't sit down to be believing that you are healed. You stand up and you do something. It is when you stand up to do something that God's power goes into action. That's when God, and that is when Satan will bring fear. And that is why you must fill yourself with enough faith that you are not even aware of the fear. Because that point is crucial. That is where you get the miracle or lose it. At the point of acting. At the point. You act on what God says. You act on what God says. He calls the things that be not as though they were. And as he was calling, he was not considering his body nor the deadness of Sarah's womb. So when I call the things that be not as though they were, I am giving thanks to God. When I call the things that be not as though they were, I am giving thanks to God. I thank God his power is working in my body. I thank God his power is healing my body now. I mean, you keep speaking. Imagine you're right there on the bed and you're saying, I thank God I'm getting up. I thank God I'm getting up. You're lying down on the bed. I thank God I'm getting up. I thank God my body is responding to God's power. I give God praise. Every organ in my body is cooperating. And as you're speaking those words, you, you, you shift. And you bring your legs down. I thank God that I'm getting up now. And as you say it, you get up. You stagger, you stop. I thank God that my body is full of strength. God's power is working in my body. As you're talking and walking, a miracle just takes place there. It's not enough to talk. You've got to act on the talk. You've got to go beyond mental ascent to the supernatural. Am I teaching good tonight? Yeah. God's power is at work. When you say that, you are not considering your body. Why? What about shutting yourself in? All day, all night, you speak the word of God, speak the word of God, speak the word of God, until you are so full of it, you stand up. Consider not the deadness or the symptoms of your body. Give thanks to God. Give glory to God. Call the things that be not as though they were. Amen. I said amen.
I said, Amen. While you're feeling the symptoms, you speak the word of God. I have the image of a healed man. I have the image of a, of, of a healthy man. I have the image of a strong man. My sight is perfect. I have 20 20 vision. My eyes are in the best state. My hearing is sound. My eardrums are perfect. Shakalataba. Shakalataba. My heart is brand new. My organs are alive. And the power of God is at work in my body. You speak God's word. You speak God's word. They told you your wife cannot have children. You stand up and call her mother of twins. Mother of twins. Mother of twins. I see two nations in your womb. Mother of twins. Lakotabayata. 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 And after you call her mother of twins, go in and do the needful. Go in and do the needful. Mother of twins. Back it up with action. And let's see where that devil that was born will stop that pregnancy from coming. You speak what God says. You speak God's word. Because God's word gives access to God's power on the earth. And while you are talking, God is walking. While you are talking, God is walking. While you are talking, God is walking. So keep talking. Let God keep walking. And it won't be long. You will see the result of your talk. Glory to God. I say glory to God. I say glory to God. I say glory to God. What did we say when we got born again? We said our sins are forgiven. We call the things that be not as though they were. When we got born again, we said we are righteous. When we got born again, we call the things that be not as though they were because they are our reality. When we pray or praise, what are we doing? We're calling the things that be not as though they were. Hallelujah. What do we do when we prophesy? We are calling the things that be not as though they were. What do we do when we preach? When we preach, we are calling the things that be not as though they were. We call it over the people. We speak it into the people. We create it into the people. We call it into the lives of the audience. We command it to take effect in their lives. And because we are speaking steadily and they are listening, suddenly their lives are changed. Glory to God. I say glory to God. I say glory to God. I say glory to God. Say with me this week, I walk in the power of God constantly. I am calling the things that be not as though they were. I call my body healed. I call my back healed. I call my sight healed. My sight perfected. I call myself strong and healthy. Strong and healthy. I call myself healed. I call the things that be not as though they were. I didn't hear a powerful amen. I didn't hear a powerful amen. I dare to call the things that be not as though they are. I dare to say I am healed. I dare to say I am healthy. I dare to say I am strong. I dare to say I am well. I dare to say it. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Tonight you just act on it. The power is available. All you just act on it. Do what healed people do. Agabo Jakaya. Because God's power is available. All you need to do is take delivery of it. As soon as you step in, there is a manifestation. Glory to God. Stand on your feet. That's all I got for you. Are you blessed tonight? Are you blessed tonight? Hakaba Say the power of God is working in my body. Say it again. The power of God is working in my body. One more time. The power of God is working in my body. Say it again. The power of God is working in my legs. Is working on my waist. Is working in my organs. The power of God is working in my brain. The power of God is working in my eyes. My sight. My sight. The power of God is working in my sight. The power of God is working in my ears. The power of God is at work in my body. Glory! Shatola Labadada. And we take authority over every oppression, infirmity, disease, sickness, every harassment of the devil. Stop in the name of Jesus. Body be healed. Kayada. Take it. 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 In the name of Jesus. Ayayaya. Kiandosha. 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 Kianosha, Jajo, Jojo, Jojo, Egeleba, Lakatana, Brekatola, 
Tatora Tatala. Satan, get your hands off the power of God into those circumstances and situations. Creative miracles, curative miracles, restorative miracles, preservative miracles, miracles of provision. Receive it in the name of Jesus. It is done. Now do what you couldn't do before. Do what you couldn't do before. Anything you couldn't do before, do it. Your body is responding. Your body is cooperating. Your body is responding. Your body is cooperating with God's power. Your body is aligning with the power of God. Your body is aligning with the power of God. Your body is aligning with the power of God. Your body is aligning. Nakoda. 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 Ayakata. Broken bones have been mended. There's a mending. There's an alignment. There's a perfecting. Pain. Go. 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 In the name of Jesus. Father, we rejoice. And we speak to every circumstance, every situation. We declare right now you have creative miracles in your finances. You have direction. You have clarity. Your thoughts are ordered. Your thoughts are directed. You are intentional. And everything is working around you. Father, we give you praise. Now go ahead and do what you couldn't do before. Quickly, go ahead, do what you couldn't do before. Begin to rejoice, begin to rejoice, begin to celebrate. You couldn't stand up, stand up. You couldn't see, see. Grab something and do what you couldn't do before. Miracles all over the place. Father, we give you praise. Father, we give you praise. Father, we give you praise. Glory to God. Glory! Amen. Whoa, I tell you, it's all over this place. Now listen to me quickly. We'd like you to call our office, share with us your testimonies. We want to hear what God is doing with you, what God has done to you know in your life within the last four days or three days since we started teaching on this. We still have a few more days to go, and it's getting more and more exciting. Listen very carefully. Give us a call. We want to share in your testimonies. I want to take up your offerings quickly before I join Mr. Michael Bush in the other studio where we'll be bringing to you questions, you know, answers to your questions and response to all your queries that you have sent by email. And I want to encourage you again those of you that have a lot of things to ask, begin to send me your questions and your testimonies and your queries to ask the counselor at gmail.com because Mr. Michael Bush and myself, we're going to start attending to the current mails and current testimonies and all the things you are emailing us beginning from this Sunday. We're going to go live into Ask the Counselor and we're going to open all the phone lines and we're going to interact. It's going to be explosive from Sunday. So quickly, shoot your emails, send us questions, send us your responses, share with us your testimonies, tell us what God has done in your life, what God is doing in your life. We're excited and we are, we, you know, we're looking forward to hearing all the positive results, around, reports around the world. I want to thank partners and friends who continually support this ministry. Through your givings, we're able to get this gospel to the ends of the earth. And I'd like you to know that you're a partaker of the reward of this ministry. You are a partaker of the reward. And we want you to know that nothing you give to this ministry goes unnoticed by Jesus. So do not be weary in well-doing. You will reap in due, in due season. It's indeed a glorious, glorious thing to be partners with God in getting the truth of the gospel to the ends of the earth. In the house centers, I'd like you to grab your offerings. In the campuses, I'd like you to grab your offerings. We're giving in honor of the word of his grace. And online too, and those on radio, you, Mr. Michael Bush will read the banking details for you as we honor Christ through our givings tonight. Father, thank you for the privilege to give. Our offerings are a sweet smell before you. And we rejoice for the privilege to make a difference in this world through our finances. I decree that the needs of your people are met supernaturally. We call for favors. We call for miracles in the area of jobs and finances and in the area of businesses. Miracles in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for answered prayer. Thank you for great grace and the blessing. We give you praise for all you've done and what you're still doing in the lives and hearts of your people. In Jesus' precious name, and every believer says a powerful amen. Now listen, if, you know, tomorrow evening we continue teaching and at the end again I'll be joining Mr. Michael Bush who continue the whole of this week. You don't want to miss any service. Get more people who are sick tuned to the broadcast. 
And if the service is over, you can replay for them. The messages are left on the Facebook page and on YouTube intentionally. So you can have access to get people that are sick to listen to it all day long, all night long, all day long, all night long, all day long. All Let them feed on it. You know, we, leave, we left them there online intentionally. So get people that are sick to feed on the word. And we look forward to seeing all of you tomorrow at 6 p.m. Meanwhile, in the next few minutes, I'm joining Mr. Michael Bush. What an honor to serve you the grace of God. And until I see you in the other studio, enjoy the grace of Christ. Let's celebrate viewers around the world for being a part of this service tonight. Glory! Amen! Woo! I tell you, I'm excited tonight. By this message, for these all the messages and books by Dr. Abel Damino. Please call plus 234-806-800-9939 or email powercityoffice at gmail.com. It is the will of God that we should be in good health always and be healed of every infirmity. If you don't need healing, someone around you definitely might need it. This is your opportunity and for those sick around you to be connected to the teaching of God's word for healing. Don't forget, God's word is God's medicine. I prophesy as your amen will come like thunder, you will swim in the miraculous. Power City International presents Harvest of Healing, Miracles, Signs and Wonders, ministering Dr. Abel Daminer. Date, 11th April to 18th April 2021. Time, Monday to Saturday, 6 p.m. daily and on Sunday, first service, 8 a.m. and second service, 11 a.m. GMT plus one. And a rebroadcast on the following radio stations. Radio Aquaibom 90.5 FM Uyo 11 AM to 1 PM XL FM 106.9 Uyo 3 PM Unio FM 100.7 Uyo 3 PM to 5 PM Comfort FM 95.1 Uyo 6 PM to 8 PM Inspiration FM 105.9 Uyo 9 PM to 10 PM Heritage Radio 104.9 Uyo, 10 p.m. till midnight daily and also on Kingdom Live Network Station. Also live on Facebook at Abel Damino Public Figure, YouTube Abel Damino Ministries International, Twitter Abel Damino and Instagram at Abel Damino Watch Real Time. Venue Power City International, number 98 Wangibo Road, Uyo, Akwaibom State, Nigeria. Host Doctors Abel and Rachel Daminer. Thank you for staying tuned. We just move straight to the announcement that the radio audience will be waiting for bank details. The free banks, as always, there's FCMB, there's Zenith, and there's UBA. Of course, the account name remains the same. One account name in three places. The account name is Power City International. There's FCMB 2982-68-2028. That's for FCMB, account name Power City International. The second account and uh, the second bank is Zenith 10-12-36-59-12. 10-12-36-59. 5912, that's for Zenith. The account name is Power City International, but of course. And then finally, UBA 100, 39, 26, 465, 100, 39, 26, 465. Quickly, quickly. Finally, for sponsorship, just call up plus 234 803 275 6104. You email Dr. Abel Damina at yahoo.com. Dr. Day is uh, GRO. Of course, I'm done with those um, opening announcements just in time to go join the man of the moment, the man without whom we cannot run this uh, part of the show. I mean, the entire show is just centered around one man. I was going to say, so the show is uh, Damina centric, right? <laughs> okay. okay, so no bye is still on set. Um, my name is Michael Bush. I'm super excited to be here. But Global Baba is also here, international televangelist, prolific author, 
and someone who just teaches the word the way you've never heard before. Help me welcome Global Barber, Dr. Abel Damina. The Intercontinental, Mr. Bush, good evening. Global Barber, so nice to see you. What a blessing. So, so nice to see you. Praise God. How has been your day? Yeah, fantastic, fantastic. I'm on radio. I had to go sign on the program, come here. And okay, then, okay, the usual. <laughs> the magic. The usual, the usual. <laughs> so nice to see you, Global Barber. Thank you. Um, uh, we'll just pray. We'll just say the stage As usual. the ritualistic prayer. Let's pray together. Father, we rejoice that your word is flooding the nations. Hearts of men are open to the truth of the gospel. Minds of men are being rewired by the Holy Ghost through the teaching of your word. And we thank you that even where there was resistance, the resistance is collapsing. Because you can do nothing against the truth but for the truth. The word of God covers the earth as the water covers the sea. So we ask that laborers are released to the nations of the earth to teach and preach and disciple men. All over the world, we declare that there's an exodus of men from darkness to light. And we decree that even in our state, our nation and other nations of the earth, our governments continue to, to be used as instruments of creating an enabling environment for the gospel to thrive. And we thank you, Lord, that your word finds free cause, even and it is glorified around the world as it is glorified with us. We give you praise and glory, and we pray specifically for ministers of the gospel that are in countries where there is heavy persecution, where there is strong opposition from the government down against the gospel. We pray that they have boldness, that they continue to preach with boldness. We pray for strength for such ministers and for such believers. And we decree that even in the midst of persecution, the gospel thrives most. We give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. From uh, Delta State, let's just go to next door, Edo, Bidin City now. Please, I have some personal issues, which I've tried my best to resolve, but they have persisted over the years, and I need your counsel on how to overcome them. One, I'm a born-again Christian. I love and serve God, but have been experiencing stagnation, failure, and delay in many areas of my life. I've fasted and prayed, but yet I'm still I'm suffering. Two, I do have bad dreams most times, Global Baba. I see myself in the village. I left for over 20 years now. And in most cases, I see myself living in the same old house, the same dreams my elder sister is having. And as such, we are battling poverty despite all efforts we make. Three, I've gained admission to study in the university for four years. And after six years, I haven't graduated. It's been from one carryover to another, despite reading hard for the exams. And finally, four and many more challenges I've been experiencing. So, counselor. How do I overcome all these? Please, I need your counsel as soon as possible. Godwin from Benin City, Edo State, Global Baba. We just go to our first call, our first door. Hello. Yeah, hello. Many thanks for joining us. Your name, yeah. where you calling from? Yeah, good evening. I'm calling from Delta State. Your name? My name is Essay. I want to ask a question on forgiveness of sin before and after the law. Okay. On one of your Christian said, treat me. Okay. You said we have obtained internal forgiveness. Yes. That was what that was the like that was what you said at the end of the administration. Yes. So sir, my question is even if a man or a believer sins with or without confession, is granted is he granted forgiveness? Yes, of course. Now you must remember that the forgiveness of sin is not predicated on you confessing anything. The reason why Jesus died is because of your sins. He died for the sins. So automatically by his death, your sins are taken care of. So in Christ Jesus, if a believer be overtaken, if a brother be overtaken, or a believer gets into sin, the Bible's recommendation is that those that are spiritual should restore him. So there is a restoration. But of course, that restoration is not confessing sins. That restoration is that Elders in Christ, who you look up to, are able to take you, keep you down, show you who you are in Christ, show you what the scripture says about you, so that you, your, your identity is made very real to you. The moment you come face to face with your identity, that appetite for that misbehavior suddenly disappears because now you know who you really are. And that's how believers are taken care of where sinful acts are concerned. Remember, Jesus already died for you. And the Bible says, as you stay in the light of his word, the blood of Jesus is always cleaning you from every sin. It is an automatic work that you receive from the advocacy of Jesus, guaranteeing you totally cleansed. The reason why you're thinking of confessing sin is because you're thinking of stealing 
fornication, adultery. But there are other sins that you commit in the course of the day that you are not even aware of. And if you must confess sin to be forgiven, then there, that means that there are a lot of sins in your life that are not forgiven. Then that means you will never make it to heaven. So the point is this. Jesus' death took care of all our sins, both known and unknown. So whenever you find yourself do wrong, all you need to do is receive what Christ has done, rise up in strength and tell yourself, you are bigger than what you just did. And when you say that, the consciousness of who you are destroys the appetite for further continuity in that act. So what we have in Christ is eternal forgiveness. Okay, from Edo to Rivers. Hello, Global Baba. My name is Prince Kalu. I'm in Port Harcourt. Did we answer that Edo you read? Yes, I, the oh, phone I read it was uh, a yeah, phone call. Okay, okay. Yes. The, the, blah, 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 thank you. What, That's was, why. It? what was it? Okay, it's, um, it's a whole lot. It's just talking about stagnation in its life. Oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes. All right, now, first of all, you must realize that even if you are not a Christian, you will have still been having that stagnation. So you're not having that stagnation because you're a Christian or because you're not a Christian. It is because of your exposure. You must have a mindset where they have already taught you. They've given you a consciousness. That tells you as long as you keep having those dreams, you will keep experiencing backwardness. And as a man thinketh, so is he. So what do you need to be free? You need to expose yourself to sound teaching. Sound teaching. You see, the teaching of God's word is a cure to 99.9999 problems of Christians. Expose yourself to sound teaching. The word of God is for reproof. And it is for correction. It will reprove you, it will correct you, and it will instruct you in righteousness. That's what the teaching of God's word do. It will change your mindset. And when your thinking changes, your life experiences will be affected. So you need to change your mind by exposing yourself to the sound teaching of God's word. Just as we now expose the next caller on okay. air. Hello. Hello. Good evening, Mr. Bush. Many thanks for joining us, ma'am. You know where you're calling from. I'm Ivan. Good evening, Global Baba. Good evening. Bless you. Bless you, sir. Thank you. Um, we gave us instructions to study the whole gospel. And yesterday, while studying the book of Matthew, the book of Paul, the record of the devil took him, that I told, when you were talking about the book of Peter. So I want to find out the devil that was working in that chapter, who is he? And then I already know that the devil did not carry the so what does he mean by it? And the devil speaks to him. Okay. And then like, so how can Jesus and um, Satan be in the same place at the same time? And then again, what does he mean? What does Jesus mean in Matthew 12, that he wants to take the two? And again, can we explain the working that in Matthew 22? And when again, Jesus was talking about he went and, and he, he invited guests. And they did not come, so we have to go out and invite people by the prostitute and every man. And then a man came who was not addressed people, but you are not properly dressed. What was that kind of me in, in class reality? Okay, I know that you're going to have all those questions. In fact, today, we were reading, I think, some portion in the book of Mark or something with the family. And those issues also came up and we discussed on them. Remember the parables of Jesus We are not literal. So every time Jesus gave a parable, the mission of the parable was to reveal him to Israel. So let me start with the parables before I go to the temptation. Every parable Jesus gave, whether it was the people that were invited and refused to come and they went to the highways. He was talking about the Jewish people whom he came for and they rejected him and he opened the door to the Gentiles. All right, all the, all the parables were concerning the fact that Jesus was among them and they were looking for Jesus to come. He was using parables to reveal to them that he was the one among them. Even the one that the person came without a, a, a wedding a cloth. He came to attend the marriage supper. He was just telling the people that, you know, there's a wedding going on and some of you are attending the wedding that you have been preparing for without wearing the wedding gown. Meaning you are rejecting me who is supposed to clothe you and qualify you for the Messiah that you are waiting for. All of those were parables to reveal Christ. Now the temptation of Jesus in Matthew chapter 4 was actually theologians tell us it was a summary of all the temptations that Jesus had in life. The loss of the flesh, the loss of the eyes, the pride of life. It was just the way Matthew reported it. The reportage of Matthew was why it made it sound like that. 
Jesus and Satan didn't travel to a mountain. All of those were temptations in the mind of Jesus. Thoughts that Satan kept throwing into Jesus' mind that Jesus resisted and refused to succumb to. Remember, he was tempted in all points, yet without sin. So that's a summary of the temptations that Jesus was exposed to as a man. He was tempted in the pride of life, the loss of the eyes, the loss of the flesh, summarized by Matthew in Matthew chapter 4 as the devil taking Jesus to a high mountain. It's a style of writing. I hope that helps you. I especially, yes, I especially like the evangel, that idea of and again and again and again. I, I thought I, I didn't know how we were going to end with that one, but this next <laughs> caller. Hello. Okay. Hello? Yes, many thanks for joining us. We know where you're calling from. Hello, my name is uh, Lou. I'm calling from Ondo State. Uh, uh, please, actually, I have a question. It's based on uh, baptism. In the book of Acts of Apostles, chapter 8, talking about the, the encounter Philip had with the token Enoch. Um, after the conversion, now baptizing with water, and at the same time, he received the Holy Ghost at some time. So that's the question. Then another thing is, I read some people talking about uh, some pastors maybe preaching about generational forces. Like, um, maybe you remember the second song is taking over or overtaking the first song in some families. That way you can see sometimes it appears to be true. So what I don't know, I want you to throw more light on this. Thank you, sir. All right. If you've been following the teaching, that's why I keep teaching and I say pay attention. Pay attention. Because if you've been paying attention, you will have heard a few days ago, I said the book of Acts is not a doctrinal material. And that's what we've been proving as we keep teaching. It was a journalistic account of what, how the New Testament church evolved, how it grew. So in chapter 8, they were still growing. But if you follow closely, after chapter 8, you won't see any other water baptism. Because shortly after chapter 8, Paul the Apostle came into the church and brought sound teaching. And when Brother Paul came into the church, nobody was baptizing anymore. So all of those were, were part of their growth period. And in their growth, they had what we call cross-testamental application. They carried over practices from the Old Testament. But as they grew in Christ, they dropped those practices. Remember, the prophecy is John said, I baptize with water. But the mightier than I will not use water. He will use Holy Ghost. The day of John is gone. This is the day of Jesus. Jesus does not use water. He uses Holy Ghost. So when you receive Jesus, you are baptized into Christ. You are baptized with the Holy Ghost. And once you receive the Holy Ghost by salvation, you don't need water anymore because you're already saved. It's one baptism and that baptism is receiving Christ. Okay, fantastic. I... Hello, Global Baba. My name is Prince Kalu. I'm in Potakot. Please pray for me. Everything about me just turned bad. My wife left me with kids and ran away. Please, Daddy, I need words of prayers for God's mercy on my life. I think the same answer we gave to, yeah. to I don't know, what was that? there was that a phone call about listening more, yeah. listening to the word more. Yeah. Yeah. You could find your help Yes, there. just pay more attention to the teaching of God's word. It will really help you a lot. You know, but, but it doesn't stop us from praying for you. Receive peace. Receive clarity, and in the name of Jesus, we declare an intervention in your situation. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. To Abuja, we fly, that's flying from River State, we fly straight into Abuja. God bless you, uh, uh, Global Baba, and Mr. Michael Bush. Kindly explain 1 Corinthians 3.17. If any man defiles the temple of God, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy. Which temple ye are? PMO in Abuja. What it simply means is if you get yourself into defilement, God is absent from that defilement. And because God is absent, if you expose yourself to defilement, you have a lot of things, you have consequences to confront. That's what he was talking about, Brother Paul. When he was talking about preserving your body, and he was talking about, you know, knowing that you, you carry Christ. So you don't carelessly live a life where you create a room for the devil to torment you physically. From the Namdi Azikiwe International Airport in Abuja, Nigeria, flying straight to Spain. Hello, Global Baba. Please, I really need your help. Please, I don't know what to do about um, this. I do have sex in my dream whenever I sleep, 
before I knew it, I would get wet all over, with, uh, all over my body with sperm. My name is Kelechi Augustine Duro. I'm based in Spain. I'm still single. Please, Pastor, help me out of this one. Kelechi, there are two reasons why you have wet dreams. The first one is biological. All right. Every, every boy, every guy that grew from boyhood to, to, to youth to manhood or to being a man had wet dreams one time or the other. It's, it's biological. If you ask doctors, they will affirm that. That is part of the proof that your entire reproductive system is functional. In fact, it's just like erection. Boys have erections without any reason. It's part of establishing that your reproductive system is alive. So and that is why mothers or fathers who observe that their boys don't have erection, they start complaining because it's not healthy and it's not normal. It's part of growth and development. However, when it becomes too much and you start having sexual dreams, it could also refer to the fact that maybe you are spending more time in things that are illicit. Movies, porn, you're spending time discussing with people that talk about filthy things, dirty things, you know, erotic things, you know, sexual things. And if you're exposed to such things, there's no, there's no magic. You're going to have those kind of dreams. So what do you do? Begin to renew your mind with the word of God. Spend more time hearing the word. Spend more time in the word of God. And keep reminding yourself that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And as you begin to feed on the word of God, he said, where without shall a young man cleanse his ways? By taking the, he thereunto according to God's word. He says the word of God is water that washes you. So as you spend more time in the word, it begins to clean you of things that could be responsible in your mind for those wet dreams. But once your mind is clean and you have once in a while wet dreams, it's part of your biology. If you ask doctors, they will confirm that. Okay, from Paris um, in France, we'll be going straight to another... European stop, that is Spain, first door. We just have some unfinished business back in the live studio. Hello, your name? Good evening, Papa. Evening, I'm, bless I'm you. I'm by name. Okay. Papa, um, this is the time to, I want to say to thank you for the word that you've been helping to build us up. And one of the best things that has ever happened in my life is the interpretation of the scripture that you've made us to understand. So, Let's, going straight to the point, just yesterday I was passing through the street and I saw one of these billboards and they were quoting this verse of the scripture, um, this Joel 2.25 that says, and I restore to you the years that the locust, the canker one, we know the scripture. So the very first thing, um, the first thing that came into my mind was like, what is this scripture saying? Because I've been talking about the scriptures for years, so I had to go and read the entire scripture as you've taught us to read um, verses of the scripture in context, the pretext, the post text. So I actually went and did that. When I read, at the end of it, I came into terms that what this place was actually referring to was God restoring his people, which was through Christ. That's the concept of salvation. So Papa, I would like to know, why is it that, is it that people have, the preachers of the gospel, that they have intentionally been knowing this and they don't want to make this known to the people or they don't know at all? Now, there are two other two questions that I want to ask. So a friend of mine was talking about, um, you know, working in the supernatural without knowledge. That knowledge has nothing to do with the supernatural. So is that possible? And he equally said something today too. He said that when, if Jesus was um, talking, um, saying gibberish things, when he said that, when he mentioned the aspect of um, um, harvesters being little. So now I want to ask you, sir, this aspect of calling regarding today's Christocentric meal, how do you attest to this fact? How do you explain for them to get better that as New Testament believers that we are all called, that we don't need to hear a voice from God before we go into the ministry? Thank you, sir. All right, very good. The first question you asked has to do with pastors. Are pastors not aware of this? Well, let me be honest with you. A lot of pastors don't even know the Bible at all that they preach because many of them they didn't get any form of training. They were just full of zeal, full of excitement, and people told them you have a call. In my day, I don't know about today, once somebody is very zealous, he's always going for evangelism, always coming for prayer meeting, if they see that he's very committed, you will hear people start telling him, you have a call, you have a call. And then after the person thinks he has a call, he takes the Bible. And as he takes the Bible, he just starts saying things that sound good. Or he copies what other people are doing, and that's his own ministry. So many pastors really don't know. They don't know what you know. Many didn't have any training. And then others who are training... 
they, 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 some of them are not paying attention to the rules of Bible teaching and Bible preaching. They just preach what people want to hear so they can gather crowd. They preach what will make people feel good so that they can gather crowd. That's where the dilemma is. So that is why as we keep preaching the truth, it will become glaring the difference between the truth and falsehood. And people will be forced to preach the truth of the gospel. And those who are ignorant in ministry, when they start hearing the truth, you will find out that they become humble and they begin to learn so that they too can be efficient in ministry. Then on the area of calling, every child of God is called. Romans chapter 8 says, for those he foreknew, he predestinated. Those he predestinated, he called. Those he called, he justified. So every born again believer is called. However, God brings us into the church and gives us pastors who feed us with knowledge. And when you are fed with knowledge, you grow. When you grow spiritually, the fruit of spiritual growth is ministry. You now want to preach. You now want to be a blessing to people. So the message that saves you makes a messenger out of you. And then Jesus never spoke in tongues. Because when Jesus was on earth, the spirit was not yet given. So he never spoke in tongues. Speaking in tongues is a gift that came from Jesus after his resurrection. That's why the first speaking in tongues was on the day of Pentecost. And from that day till today, the apostles, all of them spoke in tongues. And every believer ought to speak in tongues. Jesus said, this sign shall follow all those that believe. They speak in tongues. And speaking in tongues is, 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 is not a language of men. Now, your friend that told you that the supernatural is not taught, he himself doesn't know what he's talking about. Brother Paul in 1 Corinthians 12 says, now concerning spirituals, I will not have you ignorant. That means there is a teaching that is required in order for you to operate in the supernatural. Global Baba, thank you. Um, I know that the second live uh, audience question is ready. First, Joe, I just need to go complete this trip to Paris in France. I'm Steve from Paris. I really am blessed by your teachings, Global Baba. I'm so thankful to God for making me come in contact with your teachings. Since I began to follow you, my Christian life and ministry have changed totally. I really honor you and appreciate the great work that you do for the body of Christ, Global Baba. Also, after a counsel from you, I began my ministry here in Paris, starting with a weekly Bible meeting on Zoom. Now it is growing. We have taken a venue and we have our service every Sunday. I would like to have a prayer and a blessing from Global Baba because I was being trained for ministry in a church for some five years where the real gospel was not preached. But since I came in contact with the teachings, everything just changed for me. Now I know that here in Paris, we'll take over this country and all Europe with the true gospel of Jesus Christ. So Global Baba, can I have a word of prayer and counsel or instruction for, the, for this new mission we are beginning? Finally, one of my goals for this year is that one year from now, we will have grown well and we'll invite you for a massive conference here in Paris. Thank you. Pastor Steve Griffith is in Paris, France. Wow, Pastor Steve, congratulations. I will also encourage you to join our mentoring academy. That will give you an opportunity to interact with me one-on-one -on -one every week. And it will help you as you grow. When you have issues, you can always reach out to me if you join the mentoring academy. However, Father, I pray for Pastor Steve that he has utterance, he has boldness, he is kept by your power, and his ministry continues to find expression, and the word of the Lord grows mightily in the whole of Paris. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Live audience, question number two, and the last on this edition. Hello. Hello. Good evening, church. Good evening, Mr. Bush. Good evening, pastor. Bless you. Welcome. Without Baba, I want to say thank you for what God is using you to do. Truly, I'm blessed with your teaching. I just want to move straight to the question. What's your name? Sorry. My name is Udeben Brownson. Okay, go ahead. I just want to move straight to the question. It's about this tradition something. It's about a family inheritance, as in when the parents died, now in sharing of their property, as in the will. It happens that, uh, like in my place, I said, before you take part, as in to inherit what your father left for, you have to like, you know, they, you have to meet a certain demand. Like, they will call, come and give goods, come and give this, come and give that. After you, like, you cook, you know, prepare something for them. And after they say, should each of the male children should come and be giving money, you know, give goods, give this and give that. So I want to, I want to ask if truly is, is right for a believer for 
inside my spirit, I know that it's not right for a believer to get into such thing because I see it as economic waste. So I just want uh, Kluba Baba to say something about it. Thank you, sir. When they ask Jesus that kind of question, they ask Jesus, is it okay to pay tax? And Jesus told them, get me a coin. And he asked them, whose inscription is on that coin? They say Caesar's. And he said to them, give to Caesar what is Caesar's and give to God what is God. If that is a culture in your place and a tradition in your place, since it does not affect your, your faith in Christ, it does not affect your Christianity, you know, give it to them. But if it is too much for you, negotiate with them, talk with them, and see how you can reduce the, the economic waste as much as possible. But you know, they will always insist you have to give them something. So give them and, and save yourself from a lot of trouble. And just enjoy the peace of God. From the Francophonie headquarters, that's the headquarters of Francophone in the world, and that's located in Paris, in France, uh, that's in Europe. I'm coming to what should be the headquarters of Francophone in Africa, Cameroon. Yeah. Hello, Global Baba. This is Skylep from uh, Cameroon. Doctors, uh, warm greetings in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. My questions are taken from First Peter 4, 6, 17, Second Peter 2, 20, and Second Thessalonians 2, 3. Who are the spirits that were being preached to? And is it the gospel message that was preached to them? What did Peter mean by judgment must begin in the house of God, and that the righteous shall be scarcely saved? And also in Peter's second epistle, 2020, who was he referring to? If these were sinners, is it possible for a sinner to have a pyknosis, considering that was the word he used there for knowledge? Well, I will answer just two questions. The other ones, you didn't give me the references. The first question I will answer for you there is, who are the spirits that were preached to? Well, it's a type of... It's a, it's, um, Peter was making reference to the days of Noah. And the spirits that were preached to were the people in the days of Noah. They rejected the gospel, and that's why they are in prison. That's what Peter was making reference to. And then I think the second question was, um, um, was that the point judgment will begin from the, the house church, of God. Yes. Well, it's persecution. He means that persecution will begin with Christians. If persecution begins with us, what shall be the fate of those who do not even have Christ? So he was talking about persecution for the gospel. That's what Peter was communicating in that scripture. Okay, Global Baba is a fine place to live. If Cameroon is a beautiful place to spend yeah, the night. Yeah, it is. I know you will like you Cameroon. <laughs> so we'll stay over in Cameroon. Tomorrow is another day. We come and we continue in style. Until then, okay, Global Baba, we need to say a quick prayer to, you for know. For those who need yes, sure. All right, Father, we pray for all those that are in need, that are connected to this broadcast right now. People that are sick, those in need of a life partner, those that are in need of fruit of the womb. We pray for people that are depressed, those that are going through challenges in their minds and in their circumstances who need a miracle. Wherever you are right now, we command the devil to take his hands off your circumstances, off your body, and your body be healed Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. We declare that you receive marital favors. Amen. And we pray for those that are married, a miracle of the fruit of the womb, Amen. receive it Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. We pray for students who are believing God for admission, those believing God for scholarship, receive favor and supernatural favor in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we believe you for massive harvest of answers. Receive it now. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And okay, amen. so Global Baba, any moment now, we are on um, Inspiration FM. Yes. That runs yes. from 9 yes. until 10. 9 to 10. Then Inspiration Heritage. FM. Heritage, yeah. 10 to 12. Tomorrow, tomorrow. morning, 5.45 a.m. XLFM. 11 to 12, I'm um, 11 to 1, Radio Aquaibom, 1 to 3, XLFM, 3 to 5, you know, UFM, and we're back here tomorrow evening on Comfort FM. This is Michael Bush on their behalf, thanking you for your time and looking forward to another edition tomorrow. Global Baba, Dr. Abel Damina. The Intercontinental, Mr. Bush, what a day. It's been a wonderful one today. Well, we thank all of you for giving us the opportunity to serve you the grace of God, both the social media community and everybody on radio and on TV. We look forward to having all of you again tomorrow. Make sure you bring more people to be connected to this grace. And until then, enjoy the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and be blessed. Goodbye from Uyo, Nigeria. Amen and amen.